successfully performing an aortic and Hi, I hear you are the new surgical resident. I'm glad you chose vascular surgery, that is, surgery on arteries and veins, for this rotation. Let's jump right in. I'm Dr. Amanda Dixon, and today we are most likely performing an aortic aneurysm surgery on a gentleman that we will meet in a minute. One of the things we have to do is determine if he needs a surgery. Specifically, we will be determining if our patient needs abdominal aortic repair. Let's do a quick review to make sure you are up to speed, and then we'll look at his test results. The aorta is the largest artery in the body and carries blood from the left ventricle. Remember, the left ventricle is the primary pumping chamber of the heart, forcing blood into the aorta and then to the rest of the body. There are four distinct sections of the aorta. The ascending aorta, coming up out of the left ventricle. The aortic arch, going above the heart and supplying blood to the arms and brain. The thoracic aorta, passing through the chest cavity. And finally, the abdominal aorta, which carries blood to many organs in the abdomen into the pelvic region and the lower body. Our patient today has an aneurysm in the abdominal portion of the aorta. An aneurysm is a widening and weakening of the arterial wall. This is a high pressure system with the powerful left ventricle forcing a lot of blood through this section of the aorta. Normally, the aorta has strong walls that can withstand the pressure. But in some patients, that wall weakens causing the aorta to swell or balloon out. Obviously, this is a serious condition because if the aortic wall bursts, all of the blood will come rushing out, causing the patient to bleed out internally. Our patient today is a 65-year-old man. 80% or more of aneurysm patients are male. We're not quite sure why that is. Maybe this is something you can figure out as you move forward in your medical career. Our patient is also a smoker and has had a heart attack. This is common in the patients we see. Smoking increases the risk of a heart attack and increases the risk of an aortic aneurysm. Look at these images. The first is an abdominal ultrasound ordered by our patient's family doctor, who recommended Mr. Bishop for a vascular surgery consultation with me. It shows the aorta to be dilated. Here's a CT scan of a different patient, and this one has ruptured a very large aneurysm. So you can see a healthy aorta, one with an aneurysm, and this one that has ruptured. The second image is a CT scan or CAT scan that I requested which shows the relationship of the AAA, medical shorthand for abdominal aortic aneurysm, to the other blood vessels and organs. One of the things we have to determine is if this patient even needs surgery. If the aneurysm is less than 4 centimeters in diameter, then we typically recommend the patient be checked again in several years. If the aneurysm is 4 to 5 centimeters in diameter, then you need to assess the patient's health and risk factors to determine the best course of action. However, if the aneurysm is larger than five and a half centimeters, surgery is definitely recommended due to the increased risk for rupture at the larger size. Measure the diameter of the aneurysm. Now, do you think we should continue with surgery? I agree. With an aneurysm that large, surgery is definitely recommended. I'll go schedule the OR and talk to the patient's cardiologist. You go down this hall to the locker rooms, get dressed and scrubbed in, and I'll meet you in the OR. I see you found everything okay in the locker rooms. I've already had the patient checked by his cardiologist, who determined that he is a good candidate for this surgery. So we are in good shape in terms of his heart. So we are almost ready to get started. There are two routes we can go with this surgery. We can do an open procedure where we cut into the abdomen and repair the artery that way, or we can do a minimally invasive procedure where a stent graft, also known as an endograft, is inserted through the femoral artery, through the iliac artery, and into the abdominal aorta with the assistance of x-ray equipment. Given Mr. Bishop's general health, relatively young age, and his personal choices, we've decided we will do the open procedure. This is Mr. Bishop. We want to get him healthy and happy so he can go sailing with his granddaughters. He's told me all about his sailing jaunts with Savannah, Presley, and Paige. And this seems like a good reason to me to want to stay healthy as long as possible. I'm going to go finish getting ready for the surgery while the surgical team finishes the final steps of patient preparation. Okay, I've checked and the prepping and draping is complete. 
I've also checked with the anesthesiologist, and Mr. Bishop is anesthetized and his vital signs are good. Antibiotics have been given, and there are blood products available in case there is a lot of bleeding. So our first step is to make an incision down the center of the abdomen, from just below the sternum, or breastbone, to just below the navel. Use the Bovi pencil to cauterize the areas of the incision that are bleeding significantly. Next, we'll use the scalpel to cut through the abdominal wall at the midline. Be certain you stay in the exact center of the abdomen to avoid cutting through muscle. Why don't we just cut through the abdominal muscles from side to side instead of up and down? Click on the scalpel and make the incision. Good! Now we are into the abdominal cavity. First, you see a fatty layer, which is the omentum, and hangs over the transverse colon. Insert the retractor to move the transverse colon towards the head of the patient. Very quickly, we see the small intestine. The stomach is in the upper abdomen, and we want to make sure the anesthesiologist has inserted a nasogastric tube so that the stomach stays drained during the surgery. It also helps to prevent the patient from vomiting after surgery because the bowels typically go to sleep for a few days after surgery. Next, we retract the small intestine to the patient's right or our left. Use a scalpel to cut the tissue overlying the aneurysm. and place our abdominal ring retractor around the aneurysm to give us a clear surgical field. Okay, the aneurysm is obvious at this point, and the retractor is holding all the organs out of the way so we don't damage them. Mr. Bishop needs to have heparin, a blood thinner, so that he doesn't develop blood clots in the arteries above or below the clamps during the surgery. I let the anesthesiologist know to do this a few minutes ago, so we are now ready to place the clamps. We will clamp the blood flow to the legs first. Place a clamp on both of the iliac arteries. Why do you think we clamp the iliac arteries first? Now, clamp the aorta just above the aneurysm, but be careful to place the clamp below the renal arteries. Why do we clamp the aorta below the renal arteries? We've isolated the aneurysm and no blood is flowing through the section of the aorta we will be operating on. Next, take the scalpel and make an incision along the length of the aneurysm. Good! Make two smaller incisions at the top and bottom of the aneurysm. Be careful not to cut all the way around the aorta. We only want to cut small incisions at top and bottom. We can't really see what we're doing, so take some saline and use it to rinse the area. Now use the suction tip attached to the cell saver to remove the liquid. The cell saver collects and cleans the blood removed during surgery so that it can be returned to the patient. Now we can see clearly inside the aorta, and it looks like Mr. Bishop does have atherosclerosis, a hardening of the arteries. That occurs when cholesterol, fat, and other substances form plaques inside the arteries. If this were a healthy artery, the inside would be smooth. Then again, if this were a healthy artery, we wouldn't be here today. What we want to do next is take a polyester fabric graft and put it inside of this area of the aorta. The graft will allow the blood to flow through it instead of the damaged aorta. The graft is a tube knitted from synthetic fabric and is designed to withstand the normal pressures of the aorta. It's also easy to suture into the blood vessel, which is good news for us today. We are going to suture the graft into the top and bottom of our surgical area. We will use permanent suture material here. 
Why would we use permanent suture here instead of dissolvable suture? Suture in the top of the graft using small, neat stitches. Suture in the bottom of the graft. This looks like good suturing to me. But here's the real test. Remove the clamps above and below the aneurysm, and let's see if there's any bleeding around or in between the sutures. So let's take a look. Oh, he's bleeding out! He's bleeding out! Okay, just kidding. We like to joke around here with the new residents. You should have seen your face. I thought you were bleeding out. You got so pale. Good job so far. Now we need to suture close the aorta around the graft. Why would we close the aorta around the graft instead of just cutting away the diseased parts of the artery? <laughs> Go ahead and suture the vertical incision on the aorta, again making lots of small, neat sutures as you go. We are almost done here. Our patient is on his way to a healthier future sailing with his granddaughters. We need to remove the retractors and put the organs we retracted back in place. Now we need to suture the abdominal wall back together. Again, we will be using permanent suture here. Why? Suture the abdominal wall together. Next, staple the skin together. We'll remove these staples one to two weeks from now, when Mr. Bishop is healing nicely. Why do we use staples instead of suture for the skin? We need to clean the area one more time with this sterile solution. Now, please add a sterile dressing over the staples to give one more layer of protection. Okay, now our OR nurses and anesthesiologists will take Mr. Bishop to post-op recovery and keep an eye on him for a few hours. Hopefully, we can remove the breathing tube soon after surgery. Then he'll be moved to an intensive care room and we'll keep him here for several days for observation. Thanks for your help in performing abdominal aortic aneurysm surgery. I think you did a great job and I hope you will continue in the vascular surgery field. Every year more than 15,000 people die from ruptured aortic aneurysms and more than 200,000 people are diagnosed with the disease. So you can see that this would be a good career to pursue you'd have a lot of job security. But beyond that, it is very interesting and rewarding to be able to save lives by fixing problems like these. Oh, and if you ever figure out why more men than women have aortic aneurysms, I'd love to know why. <laughs>